the oldest bike. Robert Ager created this, and it, it's in honor of Ned Overin. You can see the, the design, prehistoric, it's put together with uh, bones, the, the handlebar. Up top, you can see it's got a time device, which is the, a sundial. And then protection, helmet, made out of rock, with uh, woolly mammoth fur. And of course, protection, the first security device. And the front end of the Cobra car looks like this. So there you can see that there's actually a car designed in the front of the, the bike there. These are, I don't know if you've seen big wheels in the US. These are bigger wheels. These are made for adults. So you can actually go out and have fun on these. This one's designed for snow. This one? Yeah, so you can see snowboards instead of uh, wheels. This one is a low rider. So definitely low to the ground, inspired by a car. Cowboy bike. And then these are for a trade show. Robert did this mm -hmm. with a 70s theme. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the details. It's got pedal. It's got a pull down bar. On the back side here is a makeup kit. And then while you're riding, mirror, lipstick, and blush. Again, these are inspired by the Cobra car. It's got a barbecue and a six pack holder. And then this is a tandem bike. So, bike belt for two. This is 16, 17 years ago, Robert did this. If you look at that, you would think that's pretty new, huh? Yeah, so that was done quite a while ago. Um, but a lot of the shape you can see has a lot of the look of the bikes that we do currently. So this is how Robert came up with the design of the shape of our frames. and a battery uh, and then we also have a mountain version so this is for commuting and transportation around roads and then we also have a so your employees just pick up a bike from here our retailers to be able to do a bike fit and we have worked with three doctors that have put the program together uh, Dr. Andy Pruitt's the one that has done the fit he also works with the shoes then Dr. Roger Minkow is the doctor that has worked with our saddle technology and Dr. Kyle Bakel has done our glove technology he's a hand surgeon so all three of them do a lot of the, the product that we do for your body the fit points that are the contact points for the bike, so your hands, your bottom, and your feet. Those are all worked with doctors, so they are scientifically designed, so you fit onto the bike and we can make you more efficient and eliminate injuries. Um, we've partnered with a company called Retool, and they design a lot of the product that you see in here. So this is a, a bike that they've designed to do a, a fit, Mm -hmm. And what it does is it makes it a lot more efficient to do a fit where instead of fitting you on your own bike and swapping things out like the stem, on this bike you just change the adjustment. So you can see it has dial and you just move 
the bike and get the adjustment and then you have the measurements and then you use that information so it just speeds up a, a fit on a bike. Mm -hmm. um, we also have tools to actually get you sized on yeah. a bike. Yeah. And that's what this does. Okay. And it is actually something that will speed up getting you information on what model and what bike to look at. And it, it's done with uh, a Bluetooth wand. And what happens is this will prompt you for information. The information goes in asking what type of riding, road or mountain, how many hours, what's your ability, are you a competitive or recreation, and then it'll ask for points to measure your hip, your knee, and your ankle. And with that on both sides, it can come back and tell you what size bike, what models to look at, and your saddle height. And then, you can also use this device to measure your shoe. What happened to this? It's uh, kind of it's plugged in. Tight, got, tight in there. Yeah, oh, we normally got it's not plugged in. Yeah, we got a new machine. Let me okay. See and then the, the last device is measuring your saddle. Okay. So you can see what width saddle yeah. you yeah. want to use. Yeah. And if Aaron has this working, you can actually see how it works. Just, yeah, I don't know. Nope. Set the password okay. to. Yeah. When Mike started the company here in San Jose, he was living in a trailer. And he didn't have a whole lot of money. And to start a business with no money was difficult. So he actually had, when he started, the original retailers actually paid him money up front. And then he would go buy the product. And then that's how he could afford it because he didn't have any money to, to really start. But that trailer is where he stored his product. It was stored on the underside of the trailer because he was living inside the trailer. So that was his warehouse. And for two years he did that until he had enough money to build or get a facility. And that was the second step, which is right over here. In 1974, right before he started the company, wasn't sure how to make a living, but he came up with an idea to sell his VW bus for $1,500. And with that money, he went over to Europe with his bike and he just toured around. And in the third month, while he was on this trip, for his bike? Yes. So okay. this was the first bike that we did for um, going as fast as you can and being competitive. Okay. This is a Chinelli bike, mm -hmm. and this is actually gives you an idea of kind of where we got a lot of the ideas. So Mike started with, and we still to this day, if there is the best out there, we take a look at it, and then we try to make it even better. How can we elevate it? And that's what Specialized is always about, mm -hmm. is giving the rider the best ride possible. Yeah. So this here is Mike's transportation. This is how Mike got around after he sold his VW bus. Mm -hmm. This was the only way he could get around. So one of the things he did, because of all his customers were here in the Bay Area, he would hand deliver the product when it came in, in this trailer. So he would go to each shop and deliver their product, their orders. So he got to ride the bike a lot that way, and he was very close to his customers that way. Thank you. In 1970. Six, Mike opened the first facility. And this is a, a mock-up of the facility. There's a picture of Mike in the middle there. And it gives you an idea of what the facility looked like. It was just a storeroom with shelving. And started with Chinelli parts and then he grew into more components. So Campanello components, Columbus tubing. He was also not only supplying the the parts to retailers but he was also supplying to people making bikes mm -hmm. so that was the columbus tubing is what they were using wow. to actually make bikes and then clemente was the tire company that okay. he was selling and this is actually a kit that shows you the different treads mm -hmm. so he would use this kit to go to the retailer and then he could decide what tread they wanted to carry and then this is a, a cog kit. Yeah. So back in the early days, you didn't buy the whole cassette. You would have custom cogs put together. So you would need each chain ring and then they'd put it together. Yeah, yeah. 
And then some of the other stuff in this side is original from the beginning of the business. So this is Mike's desk. That is his address book, how he kept track of his retailers. And then on the desk, you'll see paperwork from the early days. So these are invoices from Campanello and Cinelli. And these are actually invoices to retailers. And this is a Cinelli catalog and a Campanello catalog. And then Mike's passport. And uh, his business card, actually the business card, you can see the logo. That's also the same, this is the first sign that Mike had for the business. And this crate is what the first shipment that came from Cinelli was in this box. And if you look, you'll notice in the picture, yep. the crate and the sign. And then the very first catalog is right here. So you can see Mike hand wrote it and you can actually see the prices when it was dated December 1974. You can get an idea of uh, what, he didn't have a whole lot of product, but he started with some of the Cinelli components and uh, and a frame set, mm -hmm. and that was the beginnings of uh, Specialized. This shelf. So, started with components and the tire. So this tire is the very first product that Specialized ever had the Specialized name on. And that came about because Mike didn't like any of the tires you could buy. So he made his own. He went to a factory and he tried different compounds until he got something that he liked. And then he put his name on it, put specialized name on it. Uh, this here is the specialized design 1975. We designed our own bottle. And this is the tool. And this is what the bottle actually looked like. It was a, a small classic bottle, is what we called it. And then in the mid-80s, we started into the shoe business. Okay. And in those days, we had never made a shoe, so we had to find a partner. And Mike wanted to do great shoes, so you look for a good partner. So he partnered with Nike. So these three... The first three shoes that Specialized ever came out with were done at the Nike factory. And we used their engineering and they helped us with the design. And then 1988, we got into the helmet business. And that's the first helmet that Specialized did, the, the Air Force One. And that was design created by our current creative director. Back then he was an industrial designer. And now he is responsible for the design of everything at Specialized. All the helmets that we've done since 1988 have all come through Robert's hands. So they have a similar design and they definitely have a look that you can tell that one person has designed our helmets. Peter's gone won three world championships, and this one is the most recent. This was the second world championship that he won on, and that was the first world championship. So these are all the, the bikes that he rode to win his world championships. <laughs>